I'm visiting the baking capitals of the world. Bellissimo. In search of the people, <laughs> the places, and the traditions that make the very best of baking. Oh. From the laid-back sunshine vibe of Miami <coughs> to the European chic of Paris. Oh, superb. This time, I'm hitting the streets of the gastronomic capital of Scandinavia. This is Copenhagen. Home to some of the finest bakes in the Northern Hemisphere. That's impressive. I get hands-on with some Danish pastries and meet my match in a maverick master baker. It's too slatten, that is. It's not, it's all right, honestly. Copenhagen's magical nightlife keeps me entertained. This is the inspiration for Disneyland. There goes my lunch. And I get a taste of Denmark's warm welcome. Are you okay? Absolutely. Let's go. This is my first time in Denmark's hip capital, Copenhagen. And I'm really looking forward to exploring it. Look at those beautiful buildings coming down there. It's colourful, buzzy and bike friendly with over nine centuries of history. Well, Copenhagen is a fishing village. That's what it's based on. And it's all about water. So water runs through this city like veins. I've always had an affinity with water. I was born and bred in and around the sea. It just floats my boat. Forget the cold, that's for wimps. People here embrace the outdoors. Wherever you go, you see these rugs hanging on the back of the chairs. You've got your heater, you've got your rug, you've got your nice warm coffee or hot chocolate. You just relax and watch the world go by. Copenhagen's home to some of my all-time favorite baking classics. From its wonderfully rich rye breads, which are hard to beat. Look at that, full of pumpkin soup. The flavour is intense, it really is. To one of my biggest passions, Danish pastries. Come here, come here, look at this here. Can I try one of these, please? Yep. These look amazing, but I'm a little bit baffled by them. 30% wholemeal. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. It's like eating a really soft wholemeal roll with cinnamon, and it's sweet, with a beautiful chocolate on the top. That's impressive. <laughs> I'm definitely taking this idea back home with me. Thank you. Now, I'm not here just to eat Danish pastries. I'm here to meet Meta Blomsterberg, who apparently is the goddess of bacon in Denmark. <laughs> Meta is an international award-winning pastry chef, a restaurateur, and a judge on Denmark's version of the Bake Off. I think we're going to get along famously. Meta. Hi. Hello. Nice meeting you. Hello. How are you? You're right. I'm so fine. Thank you for being my guide around Copenhagen. Meta's promised to show me how good food and a warm welcome are an essential part of the Danish culture. Everywhere you go, you're met with a smile and there's a real delight in sharing and enjoying great food and hospitality. Mm. Oh, wow. In fact, they've even got their own word for it. So this is the Danish hygge. Have you heard about the Danish hygge? No. No? It's just the, the feeling, you know, the, the things sitting together around the table, eating good food, you know, the coziness. Uh, I get that, but yeah? I didn't realise there was a name for it. And this is just a small taste. I need to show you a place. Oh, fantastic, Lido. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank Hello. you. In the heart of Copenhagen, tucked down a side street, is the little unassuming lunchtime venue. Schunemann's has been welcoming hungry diners through its doors since 1877. Hi! Hi. Oh, Schunemann's is famous for specialising in Denmark's national dish, 
a lavish open sandwich loaded with delicious Nordic ingredients, built on top of a rich rye bread base. So you have never had smørbrød before? No, I haven't. How do you say that? First, smørbrød. Smørbrød. Yeah, there's the soft. A few snaps. Rye bread has been around for over 2,000 years, thanks to a quirk of fate when Scandinavian farmers found rye easier to grow than wheat. Originally the food of peasants, the schmerbel has recently been elevated to a kind of art form. Let's go. And it's traditionally washed down with local beer and a generous shot of schnapps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is the question, there are 104 versions of the schmerbel to choose from, but we're starting with a classic combo of the finest matured pickled herrings, heaped with a fresh, crisp garnish. The rye bread is underneath. Yeah. And we have apple, onion. Exactly. Celery. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, capers. And some, uh, some spices. You like it? That's delicious with the rye bread. Mm -hmm. The rye bread's got a, a sweetness to it to counter the vinegar of the herring. Mm -hmm. And then the creaminess of the sauce comes in. Mm -hmm. But the balance of the whole dish is neutral. Yeah. You've just got a nice flavor in your mouth. Yeah. And actually wash it all down with a little bit of ale. Mm. Cool. Now you smile. Let's go. I'm happy. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a pint me on. Well, half a litre. I'm Welcome so happy you wanted to join me here. <laughs> really? I'm not sure about the schnapps. Yes, you are. I'm not. <laughs> it's 40%. The Danes have a great saying, lunch without snaps is breakfast. But before I build up the courage to drink mine, we're going to try another schmerbel. This time, we've gone for a fried herring. That's a more complex flavor. Yes. It's fattier, it's richer, because yes. I, I can feel it on my lips. Mm -hmm. It actually tastes like it's doing you good. Mm -hmm. And it is doing you good. The rye bread, which is the basic in this kind of lunch, is healthy. You digest rye bread better than you yes, do conventional yes, wheat. Yes. It, goes it goes into the body of easier to your body, yeah. Of course, it's a good thing. The flavors are here. The ambiance, or the, the hygge, is here. <laughs> You've got that. I suppose it's like putting a comfortable pair of slippers on and a blanket around you and having a cup of tea with the fire on. Mm. That's sugar. You know what? We should go for the snaps now. <sighs> <laughs> Are you okay? Absolutely. Let's go. This is hygge. Right? Yeah, it will be in a minute. <laughs> Well, I've had a great day today, first day in Copenhagen. Bit of a boozy lunch, if I'm honest. But I've got one more treat. From Easter right through to Christmas, the city comes alive with a unique attraction that's been going strong since 1843. Welcome to Tivoli. Denmark's oldest and best loved theme park is more than just a fairground, it's a national treasure. Hello, sir. Hello. Welcome to Tivoli. Thank you. Step into Tivoli Gardens, it's like you've stepped into a fairy tale. What's weird is the city centre is right here. You're surrounded by buildings, and right in the heart of Copenhagen is this place. It's beautiful. Sometimes I wish I was seven again. It's got a real magical feel to it, this place. In fact, Walt Disney actually came here, and this was the inspiration for Disneyland. It's amazing. A visit to Tivoli Gardens wouldn't be complete without a go on its famous wooden roller coaster. Built in 1914, it's the only one of its kind in the world. There goes me lunch. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Next, I'm put to the test. 250 grams. Okay. 
when I come up against the Danish pastry pro. Oh. I give public transport Copenhagen style a go. I'm loving that talk on this. And for my city bake, I team up with the doyen of Danish baking. Hello, Meta. Hello. I'm on an adventure to find the heart and soul of Copenhagen's baking culture. And I'm lapping up the warm welcome that the Danish call Huga. Let's go. But I couldn't come to the Danish pastry capital of the world without rolling up my sleeves to find out how the genuine article is made. It's cold, it's wet, I'm in the middle of Copenhagen, it's baking hours and I'm here to see the best Danish pastry Copenhagen has to make. Interesting. Pastry obsessed owner and baker Torben Sorensen got his first job in a bakery at the age of 16 and never looked back. When he bought St. Peter's in 2000, he was not only buying the oldest bakery in Copenhagen, but with it came its original recipes, including one that's become a massive hit. The Onslade Snell, or Wednesday Snell to you and me, takes inspiration from the Viennese pastry tradition. Many have tried to imitate it, but this is where the real McCoy is made. Torben. Yeah, Torben. I've been warned that Torben has a fearsome reputation and rarely lets anyone into this inner sanctum. OK, Torben, so I'm here to make Danish pastries, yeah? Yes. And this is your dough? Yes, my dough. You have eggs in this? Yes. Sugar, salt, flour, yeast. Yes. And then butter folded in. No. No butter folded in. No. <laughs> OK. That's going to be interesting. A traditional Danish pastry is built up layer by layer with butter spread in between. You put butter in the mix? Yes. Yeah. You don't fold it? No. OK, so you don't do it the Austrian way? The Danish way. I'm interested to see how this affects the texture of his Danish mix. But first, Torben's putting me to work. You don't uh, want to see the bottom. OK. So you're up to, up to there? Yeah. The secret ingredient that keeps Torben ahead of his competition is this amazing, sweet-smelling paste. And I'm trying to work out what's in it. Butter, sugar, cinnamon, syrup, and something else, I don't see. Torben's playing his cards very close to his chest. Taste it. All bakers are secretive about their recipes. My dad always said to me, son, always hold a pocket full of aces. So show people a lot of stuff, but never show them everything. Now for the construction. Rolling the dough into a five meter long sausage is no mean feat, especially in the presence of a fellow perfectionist. It's too uh, slapping, but it's, uh... it's not. It's all right, honestly. So is that. <laughs> <laughs> I make this to help you. Okay. And I thought I was a tough taskmaster. Two hundred and fifty grams. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh! oh! That one's a bit big. Oh, oh. Hang on, if I test some of those over there, what are they going to be like? <laughs> I love the way Torben works because for me, he's like, he is like a kindred spirit. Fascinating guy. He starts work about half five, five o'clock. That's a bit of a lie in, if I'm honest. But he probably works there till about 11 o'clock at night. How many of these do you make in a day then? 1,000. 1,000? Yes. And you work on your own? Yeah. Why? Because uh, I know it's uh, OK every time. Yeah, but then you must be tired. No, I'm fresher than uh, I was before. There's a lot of character about it. You have to be slightly quirky, slightly skew. You see, ba I've been a baker for most of my life. I was Me too. 12 when I started. <laughs> Am I like that? Probably. I think you have to be to get out of bed in the morning. So actually, I understand. There is a lot to be saying about working on your own. With the first batch of Wednesday snails prepped, they're proved to give them their rise and then popped into the oven to bake. They should be coming out of the oven in about 10 minutes or so. Can't wait to try them. They smell delicious. The wafts of freshly cooked cinnamon are already drawing in a crowd. So I'm giving Torben a hand with the finishing touches. 
no sooner have these come out and the girls come in and start loading up the shop, they've gone. That's the culture of Danish pastries in Copenhagen. I like the boldness of these pastries. They've got a great buttery color and they're massive yet surprisingly light. I'm dying to get stuck into one and see how Torben's maverick pastry mix has turned out. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I got it. It is different. Yeah. Um, it, feel, it tastes to me more like um, an English Chelsea bun. Yeah. An English Chelsea bun has a little bit of cinnamon, mm -hmm. a few sultana, but dough only, not, yeah. not layers. Tastes good. I like that. I'm still stumped as to that secret ingredient, though, but I couldn't think of a better way to start my day. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you're short one day and you need uh, help, you call me. Yeah. I'll come in and help you. I like that. Let's go. Let's go. There it is. I love this place. I love the passion. I love the way Torben bakes. And I know if I'm ever short of work, I'm knocking on his door. One of Copenhagen's most familiar sights are throngs of cyclists. With five bikes for every car, it's no wonder it's one of Europe's least polluted cities. If, like me, you're not too clever on a bicycle, then you can hire one of the 400 electric cars dotted around the city. And it's as simple as popping into a newsagent and picking up one of these cards. That worked then. Starting, but <laughs> normally when you start a car here, boom. You start this, it just lights up. So, okay, I think we're good to go. Ooh, I'm loving that talk on this. The acceleration's amazing. But it's so quiet. I'm on my way to meet up with Meta, the queen of Danish baking. She's already introduced me to one of Denmark's classic dishes, but for my city bake, we're going to team up. When she's not writing books or appearing on Danish TV, Meta can be found hard at work crafting fine pastries. Hello, Meta. Hello. In the kitchen of a stylish cafe, Blomsterbergs. Well, I'm here in Meta's beautiful cafe and we're gonna make a Kranzerkaken. We're going to put a modern twist on this traditional Scandinavian celebration cake, made from a tower of delicious stacked marzipan rings. So, to start with, yes? we have egg white, we have icing sugar, we have marzipan, and we have chopped pistachios. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. What are we gonna do then? First of all, mash dip a little of the egg whites mm -hmm. together with the icing sugar. Yeah. And then, when it's mashed together, we put it together with the marzipan. Okay. And when it's such a small portion like this is, I would recommend that you just do it by hand on the table. Mash just work it this together. together. Yes, yes. So, so we're slackening this marzipan down now to make it a little bit thinner. Once the mix comes together, pop it in a bag and chill in the fridge for three quarters of an hour which makes it easier to handle when it comes out. So if you like marzipan, this is the dish for you. And traditionally it's eaten New Year, like New Year, Christmas time. Yeah, but we also eat it every, uh, all year. Okay. We make it as smaller cakes with some cream inside or with orange or anything, yeah. Next, roll the chunks of the marzipan mix into long sausages. Now here's the twist. So, now I put it into the pistachio nuts. So it's just to coat the marzipan in the pistachio? Yeah. So if you can't get hold of the pistachio nuts, use hazelnuts, mm -hmm. use ground almonds, mm -hmm. and again, you get that same, same, same finish. Or you can make it just naked as, as it is. Just as it is. Yeah, yeah. Another roll just beds those pistachios into the marzipan. It's quite therapeutic, this, actually. 
It's don't push down with marzipan. Literally, it's the weight of your hand. Go from the tip down to the heel of your palm and roll gently all the way along. It's yeah, nice, yeah. all the same width. Apply some pressure on the strips to flatten them slightly, which will help them form in the rings. Cut the strips into ever increasing lengths, starting at eight centimeters. Two centimeters is the growth on each one. So the reason why it goes up in two centimeters is basically because each ring is gonna get slightly bigger and bigger and bigger. So that was 18, so this is uh, 20. You're a clever guy. Thank you. <laughs> Starting with the smallest, Shape the strips into rings. The more you make, the bigger the tower. How big have you made? I have made it for 28 rings. Wow. But of course, the rings on the bottom, they really need to bake a little extra, because they need They're to... They're carry all that weight. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget a large marble-sized ball for the top. OK, so you've made sure each of the rings are nice and round. Flatten them down slightly so they're going to sit on top of each other nicely. Bake them off about 190, 195 on fan for around 10 minutes and they'll come out beautiful and lightly brown. Mm -hmm. Right, in they go. Once the marzipan rings have cooled, for that extra special touch, dip the base of each ring into melted chocolate and start to stack. It's beautiful, Paul. I think it looks amazing already, but Met has gone the extra 10K on this one and made some fancy baked marzipan swirls to decorate it. And now, the final touches. Beautiful. And then, some Danish flags. And there you have it. You don't have to put Danish flags on it. No, of course You can put British course flags not. on it. Of course, and it's also very nice in just small parts. You can bake small parts in the oven and dip them in chocolate. It's so good for coffee and tea. So that's Hugo. That's Hugo. Remember the candlelights. Thank that's you great. for helping me here in the kitchen. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you. Make it yourself now. <laughs> what a monumental way to end my tour of Copenhagen. I've fallen in love with Copenhagen, actually. It's one of those places that you feel at home straight away. The food here is beautiful. It's simple, it tastes good, and it's full of flavor. But it is all about Huga. Huga is Copenhagen. I love it. I just love it. <laughs>